Jerusalem will be desolate. That's what Daniel prophesied in the ninth chapter of Daniel. That's what Jesus prophesied in Luke 21 20. He said, when you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, you know the desolation thereof is nigh. Jeremiah called it a time of Jacob's trouble. Daniel even spoke of this so-called time of trouble. Otherwise, it's known as the Great Tribulation, when the man of sin comes into the temple and commits the abomination of desolation. That's 42 months of terrible trouble coming after that. And we're going to talk about that tonight. Thank you for joining me. My name is Ken Raggio, and this is a prophecy news break for Thursday night, October the 26th, year 2023. And I'm so glad you're here today. I hope you'll stay with me for this coming hour. We've got an enormous amount of content to cover here tonight. I want you to know and understand the purposes of the Bible prophecies because, guys, we are reaching the very last days prior to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to teach you what the Bible says and the things that we need to be prepared for, things we need to expect as these days approach. So Jeremiah said in chapter 30, verse 7, Alas, for that day is great so that there is none like it. It's even the time of Jacob's trouble. Call it Jacob's trouble. But he shall be saved out of it. And I want you to understand, that doesn't mean Israel's going to get out before the trouble, but he's going to get out after the trouble. Israel is going to have to endure hardship for 42 months, and then Jesus is going to come and save Israel, save his church, and save whoever will be saved. For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck. That's talking about the man of sin. God's going to come. Jesus is coming. The incarnation of God is going to come and save Israel and his church. He's going to break the yoke from off their neck and will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him, but they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. For what it's worth, David's going to be resurrected with all the other Jews and uh, he's going to be, the Bible said he's going to be the king over Israel as a prince under Jesus Christ who will be the king of kings and lord of lords. The 35th, 36th chapter of the book of Ezekiel tells us that David is going to be the prince under Christ for a thousand years. But we're talking about this is all going to happen after this time of Jacob's trouble. 42 months of hell on earth for Israel. Let's look at this. Daniel 12 and 1. He said, At that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. That sounds like Jesus talking. He said it would be worse than anything the world's ever seen. At that time thy people shall be delivered, and every one that shall be found written in the book. Now, guys, I want to tell you something. The Jews have to be saved just like the rest of us. Every Jew, Jesus Christ taught Nicodemus, you've got to be born again to see the kingdom. Peter preached, repent, be baptized, and be buried in the name of Jesus, and receive the Holy Ghost to be saved. The church of the living God was grafted in because Israel was cut off. Israel was cut off because they wouldn't obey the gospel. And when in the end, they're going to have to obey the gospel to be saved. Daniel 9.24 said, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression. Now let me talk about the 70 weeks for one second. That's 490 years. Each prophecy week represents seven prophetic years. The first 69 weeks of those passed in ancient times from the time of the Babylonian captivity when Israel was in captive to the uh, Babylonians and the Persians for 70 years till the time that Jesus was cut off at Calvary. The Bible said from the going forth of the commandment to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the cutting off of Messiah would be 69 weeks. So that 483 years of Daniel's prophecy took place in the Old Testament times until Jesus was crucified at Calvary. Now we have one seven-year period left. That's seven more years to finish Daniel's 70th week. And he said it is to finish the transgression. God's going to finish the sins of Israel, to make an end of their sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. So we're going to take a look at the world events that are shaping up that I believe are going to lead us exactly to this horrific event called Jacob's Trouble, the Great Tribulation, Israel under siege, surrounded by armies. Now we already know, hardly anybody in the world I suspect 
is not aware that in the last 20 days, Israel and Hamas have been at war. The Guardian from Britain says that Israel-Hamas war has already claimed more than 7,000 Palestinians killed by Israeli bombardments, the Gaza authorities say. Now, you can probably uh, estimate that Gaza is inflating those numbers. We've got other numbers that show quite a few thousand less than that number, but we also know that it all began when Hamas invaded southern Israel and launched thousands of missiles and launched a ground uh, guerrilla warfare against the local civilians and killed over 1,400 Israelis in cold blood just without any warning, cut off their heads, burned them alive, shot them up, all kind of horrific nightmarish scenarios you never seen anything like it and so Israel uh, declared war on them because of their atrocities and the atrocities have not slowed down since that time the daily news the Hurriyet daily news in Turkey says Israeli troops have launched a brief ground raid into Gaza at, ahead of expected wider incursions this war just gets worse and worse 20 days in it's hardly even begin to manifest the Jewish News Service says the Israeli Defense Forces conducts a targeted raid inside the Gaza Strip. Now this is Israel against Hamas, which is a terrorist organization funded by Iran. They tell us that Hamas is blocking the evacuation of their own citizens. Hamas is blocking civilian evacuations in Gaza. In fact, they're shooting their own people to keep them from fleeing. This is a horrific thing that's going on there. The Daily Saba also in Turkey talks about how Israel's violence ruptured Israel's normalization ties with Turkey. Let me read a little bit of this. The Turkish Republic's reaction to the conflict and that of several political parties has been sensitive as well as with anger with protests in several cities and even calls for the Turkish armed forces to enter Palestine. So people in Turkey are saying it's time to invade Israel. They want Turkey to invade Israel. Let me tell you something. Turkey's Recep Erdogan would like nothing better. He's just biting his tongue, I'm sure. He's, he's waiting and waiting until the time is right for Turkey to take over Palestine. He knows that he's got to play to the world stage, first of all. But you can believe one of these days that a Syrian man of sin is going to come down there and he's going to invade Israel because the Bible says it's going to happen on Wednesday. Erdogan said that he was canceling plans to visit Israel because of the inhumane war against the Palestinians. Now, guys... Before the Palestinians can claim inhumanity of, on Israel's part, they've got to reckon with their own inhumanity and what they did to Israel. Erdogan said, I shook the hand of this man Netanyahu one time in my life, referring to his meeting with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly last month. He said, if Netanyahu had continued his good intentions, our relations might have been different. But now, unfortunately, that will not happen either because they took advantage of our good intentions, he said. But so what we're talking about here today is Israel and Turkey have faced a crisis now that is basically busted up their friendly relationship, and we know it's going to lead to a bigger war. Here's two more articles or two more headlines from the Daily Saba. Israel order for Gazans to move south may be a war crime. Now, that's according to Amnesty International. Guys, the reason I give you this headline is because you need to know and understand that the world court and the world opinion is going to turn increasingly against Israel. The harder that Israel smacks down Hamas, the more the anti-Semitic and pro-Palestinian cause is going to become. Here's another article. The second article says Hamas representatives are now in Moscow to hold talks with Russian diplomats. You need to know that Russia does not consider Hamas a terrorist organization and Russia is interested in playing mediator between Hamas and Israel. And so this also speaks of a deteriorating relationship between Israel and Russia, the fact that Russia will not uh, designate Hamas as a terror organization, and that the prophecies also tell us that Russia's is going to be Gog and Magog of Ezekiel 38. Russia's going to lead the charge at Armageddon, so we know how that's going to develop. 
Uh, this article from the Middle East Forum says, Tehran is making its move on the border of Israel amid the Gaza standoff. Now, guys, this is all in one word, escalation. Iran has always been chomping at the bits to wipe Israel off the map, and now they have more and more reason. They have stirred up this conflict between Hamas and Israel, and the worse Israel treats Hamas, the more Iran justifies themselves. And so they're stirring up Iran, uh, they're stirring up Iraq, they're stirring up Syria, they're stirring up Lebanon, they're stirring up Gaza, and they're stirring up the Palestinians in the West Bank. So Iran is really the provocateur behind this, and Turkey is going to get on board with this whole Islamic cause before it's all over with. So the further it goes, the worse it's going to get, and that's what the prophecies tell us. From Lebanon to Yemen, this article says, by Syria and Iraq, the Iran-led regional axis of which Hamas is only a minor element is moving into position. Some of its component militias have entered the fray already, carrying out limited attacks against Israel and U.S. forces. What I want to tell you is that there's war going on between Lebanon, that is the forces of Hezbollah, and Israel. There's drones and missiles coming from Lebanon. There's drones and missiles coming from Syria into the Golan Heights, into the Galilee region. And all of this is fomented by Iran. Iran is moving troops in the direction of Israel already. You see this blurb here from Lebanon to Yemen via Via Syria and Iraq, the Iran-led regional axis, which Hamas is only a minor element, is moving into position. Guys, this is going to turn into a worse and worse war. According to the Washington Times, the Pentagon says the Iran-backed militias injured 21 U.S. troops on a counterterrorism mission to Iraq and Syria. Guys, the Iranians hate the United States as much as they do Israel. They call the United States the great Satan. And we see that the United States is being engaged in this war. The United States allegedly is going to be the protector of Israel. But we know that uh, Joe Biden's administration is absolutely duplicitous in this matter. And while they say they're going to protect Israel, they're sending hundreds of millions of dollars in help to Hamas and the Gaza Strip. So we know that, that the United States' help to Israel is going to be not without uh, equivocation. There's going to be some exceptions to the rule. And we know that Iran is going to engage the United States. It's going to be a nasty war. But meanwhile, back in Israel, Gallant says it's either us or them, and we will win. 125,000 residents in the north of Israel have, and the south have been evacuated. They're trying to protect the, the people of Israel. We know the Iron Dome has fended off thousands of rockets. Some of them have got through, but now we've got all kind of uh, new kinds of warfare going on with drones and with uh, ground warfare and just guerrilla warfare of all kinds, hand-to-hand -hand, hand -hand fights and, and murders and sword fights and uh, burning people alive and cutting off their heads and shooting them up. There is just no military rules in the way Hamas and these terrorists are operating. Here the Moscow Times tells us that the Hamas delegates have arrived in Moscow for talks according to the foreign ministry. There you see Sergei Lavrov, who's the Secretary of State, shaking hands with Hamas representative. Nine Arab countries now are calling on the United Nations Security Council to force Israel and Hamas to cease fire. A joint statement adopted by the foreign ministers of Bahrain, Egypt, Jordan, Qatar, Kuwait, Morocco, the United Arab Emirates, Oman, Qatar, and Saudi Arabia are calling on the United Nations Security Council to commit the parties to an immediate and durable ceasefire. So what am I saying? This is going to escalate into a world conflict. We've got all these nations are trying to speak up and trying to force something to the United Nations. And we all know that in the end, the United Nations is going to side with the, with the Islamic side of the world and that the Jews, historically, we've seen it in every vote that's ever happened at the General Assembly in the United Nations that's been anti-Jewish. Sputnik from Russia says, Iran will not allow the United States and Israel to scapegoat Tehran over the Gaza crisis. So Iran is trying to say, hey, you can't blame us, but they know good and well they're to blame. Netanyahu, they say, is dragging the United States into this war to save his own political career. You can't trust anything that comes from the Iranians, guys. Here, Israeli 24 News says, the IDF has eliminated several... Hamas commanders with limited ground incursions into Gaza. 
and that Hamas is ready to swap civilians for 6,000 terrorists, they say, locked up in Israel. I don't think that's going to happen. Hamas and Iran officials are in Moscow for talks, the Kremlin says. And look at these headlines. This person says, I carried a beheaded baby in my hands, one resident of a kibbutz says. And the Israeli Security Services arrest over 60 suspects in the West Banks. Guys, this terrorism thing is spreading out all over the state of Israel. But look at this. This is where I think you get really prophetic in the essence. Israel-Hamas war is part of a larger global struggle between freedom and tyranny, says Gary Kasparov. This is from Al Jemeiner. This is, a, this is an editorial, but it makes a lot of sense. This famed human rights activist Gary Kasparov said Wednesday, he framed this ongoing war between Israel and Palestinian terrorism group Hamas as part of a larger global struggle between freedom and tyranny, arguing the latter believes now is the time to destroy the Jewish state. It's a war of freedom and democracy against tyranny and dictatorship, and Israel has been fighting this war for a long time. He said, our enemies have not lost hope to eradicate Jewishness from history. Now, guys, this is what I want to say to you today. This is all about a prophecy. The Bible says there's going to be a time of Jacob's trouble. Jesus said Jerusalem is going to be made desolate. Zechariah chapter 13 says two-thirds of the Jews are going to die. Jesus said, then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor shall ever be. Look at this headline from the Times of Israel. Pro-Hamas sentiment is shocking European Jews and it's rekindling fears about their future. Now, I want you to listen to this. All over Europe, you got to get this, all over Europe, the Islamic pro-Palestinian sentiment is surging. It's not just hatred against Jews, and it's not just the Jews in Europe that are afraid, but there is an, there is an amazing dynamic taking place all over Europe where it, the Islamic sentiment is taking dominion in Europe, in London, in Berlin, in Amsterdam, in Vienna, in Brussels, in Paris, all over Europe, this article is saying there is pro-Palestinian sympathies. People riding in the streets by the thousands. The police won't even touch them. The politicians, so many of them are mute. They don't want to say anything because they fear for their own lives. I'm trying to tell you something. You better know and understand that we're headed for a global war, guys. We're headed for a global war. This from the Jerusalem Post. 224 hostages are still being held in the Gaza as the war enters the third week. Look at these headlines. Hamas delegation is visiting Moscow. Hamas says that about 50 Israeli hostages have been killed in Gaza. And this from Breitbart. Look at these headlines. Iran's president said support for Israel is Western racism and colonialism. I want you to see that the Islamic world is completely anti-Western. This is not anything new, but the fact that Europe, the fact that the Vatican, and the fact that the globalists are taking sides with Iran and Turkey and Russia is a terrifying thing for the West and for the United States because we're going to see a global war. I might as well tell you, the Bible says there's going to be a huge war that's going to break out in the Middle East on the Euphrates River in the territory probably around Syria that's going to engage all these great spirits of the world. It's going to engage Catholicism, communism, Islam, and capitalism. The four horsemen of Zechariah 6 and Revelation 6, and that war is going to break out, according to Revelation 9, on the Euphrates River, and one-third of mankind is going to die. And I believe it's a war between the very forces that we see expressing themselves right now. The second headline in this Breitbart page says, the families of the Hamas victims, that's the Jews, the Israelis, whose families were victims of Hamas are urging the world to wake up to the religious conflict 
with Islamists. They say they don't want Palestine. They want to annihilate Judaism altogether. They want to get Israel completely annihilated. This is a religious war between Islam and Judaism, and they have they're not going to be satisfied with a Palestinian state. They're going to never stop until they have driven the Jews into the sea, from the river to the sea, they say. They want the Muslims to control. And then this third headline that says, This is truly poison. A University of California Berkeley instructor is slammed for offering anti-Israeli extra credit. So if you will take sides with the Palestinians, this Berkeley professor is giving you extra credits on your college scores. That's how rampant this anti-Semitism is growing. This from the United Nations today. On day one of the UN General Assembly in Geneva, they convene an emergency session on Gaza. And here we have Iranian diplomats slamming the genocide being committed by Israel. No mention of Hamas genocide. No mention that Hamas moved in without any announcement and mercilessly slaughtered 1,400 Israelis shot thousands of missiles in. That's not a genocide in these people's opinion. Only Israel defending itself is genocide. Wynette says they're decoding the enigma. What's behind the largest anti-Israel protest in Britain? Guys, I'm trying to point out to you that the sentiment in Europe is turning against Israel. The sentiment is becoming more and more Islamic. In fact, if you understand the Bible said there's going to be a man of sin going to rise up. He's coming from Assyria. He's going to be called the little horn of Daniel chapter 7. And he's going to turn part of Europe Islamic. At the United Nations, this Iranian diplomat is warning that the United States will not be spared if the war in Gaza continues. We've got a major global war about to break out. Iran is about to declare war on the United States. And when that happens, all the world's going to be involved. Russia's going to be involved. Turkey's going to be involved. And Iran's going to be involved. And we're going to see Armageddon forming. This is the last event before Jesus Christ returns. There's two big wars coming. There's a war during the Great Tribulation called the Sixth Trumpet War, where the four horsemen, the white horse of Catholicism, the red horse of communism, the black horse of capitalism, and the green horse of Islam are going to uh, have a great war in, in the Syria region of the Euphrates River. But then at the last, it's going to devolve into a war against Israel, where Russia, Iran, and Turkey literally attack Jerusalem. Gog and Magog, which is Russia, Persia, which is Iran, and Gomer and Tagarma. That's what the 38th, 39th chapter of Ezekiel tell us, this great war. Folks, I'm telling you, we are moving toward that with great speed. The Russian relationships with the Middle East after the Putin invasion of Ukraine have nothing but strengthened. Putin is stronger, has stronger ties with Iran and Turkey than in recent memory. And it's all in the Bible. The seventh verse of e Ezekiel 38 says that Russia is going to be guard unto Persia and Gomer and Tagarma, which is Iran and Turkey. It's all in the Bible, guys, and we're headed to that. When the Israeli Defense Forces operated, launched Operation Swords of Iron, they didn't realize how prophetic that was because the Bible said when Jesus come and comes back, he's coming with a sword in his mouth and he's going to rule the world with a rod of iron. But I got to tell you, it's not going to be this sword of iron that Israel's lost because the Bible said it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. I want to tell you that only Jesus Christ is going to save Israel when he comes back. I just want to remind you this. I mentioned this in a previous video. Hamas, the word Hamas is in the Bible. It's in Genesis 6, 11. God told Noah when he was building the ark that he decided he was going to destroy that generation because it was filled with violence. That's why God destroyed the generation in Noah's time because of their violence. The Hebrew word there was Hamas. Is it amazing that 6,000 years later nearly, we've got another world filled with violence, another world filled with Hamas, and that might suggest again that it's time for God to judge the world again. 
From Sputnik, the World News says the Palestinian-Israeli crisis has turned the Middle East into a powder keg. It's ready to blow at any time. You know it's going to blow any time. Iran's axis of resistance is a network designed to create chaos and fight all of Tehran's enemies. It's, it includes troops in Iraq. It includes the Iranian Revolutionary Guard from Iran. It includes operatives in Syria under Bashar al-Assad's uh, rule there. It includes Hezbollah forces up in Lebanon. It includes Hamas in the Gaza Strip. It includes the Palestinians in the West Bank. All of these is an axis of evil against Israel. Turkey's Erdogan just recently has called the Israeli response to Hamas in Gaza a massacre. Guys, they're trying to turn this all against Israel. They're justifying the genocide of the Hamas terrorists. They're justifying Iran, justifying Hezbollah, justifying Hamas, justifying the destruction of Israel. It's not going to stop here. It's got a long ways to go. In fact, the Middle East Forum tells us that one of this, one of Erdogan's allies, Turkish Hezbollah, calls a global jihad. Listen, Hezbollah is calling for a global jihad jihad say that a global jihad against the jews pledging arms and funds guys this is what i'm talking about it just may be that global jihad is at the core of the six trumpet war and ultimately the great and final battle of armageddon is it possible that jihad is the driving antagonism in the four horsemen war that's coming against the middle east on the Euphrates River, and finally at Armageddon in Jerusalem. I did this video, uh, two videos previous to this one called The Biblical Endgame. If you didn't watch that, go back and watch that. I talk about the Six Trumpet War and the Battle of Armageddon. Jesus is coming back. He's coming back to this world in just a few years. Now, you don't have to believe Bible prophecies if you want to, but if you've studied prophecies as many years as I have, and I've been studying this since I was about 20 years old, and I'm 72 now. For 52 years, I've been studying prophecies in earnest, and I can tell you what I see in this world today is exactly what the prophecies say. You don't have to believe Bible prophecies if you want to, but I'm going to tell you they're going to come to pass whether you agree with them or not. Whether you believe in them or not, they're going to happen. I've seen too much evidence of it. I can't not believe it because I know they're going to happen exactly the way the Bible says they're going to happen. We're going to see. In fact, the Bible said there's a seven-year period. In the middle of that seven years, we're going to see the man of sin go into the new built temple. He's going to commit the abomination. There's going to be armies surrounding Jerusalem. The mark of the beast is going to be launched at that time. 144,000 Jews are going to be sealed. Two witnesses are going to come on the scene and preach the gospel in Israel for 42 months. The great tribulation is going to take place during that time. Two-thirds of Israel is going to die. One-third is going to be tried in the fire. It's just a horrific time. And you need to understand that whether you believe it or not, it's happening. And I think personally, we're already in that period of time. It's time for us to get ready for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is a picture of the last seven years. On top, at the beginning of the seven years, is the Pope confirming a covenant with many for seven years. In the middle of the week, you're going to see the mark of the beast and the abomination of desolation. At the end of the week, you're going to see the first resurrection and rapture of the church at Armageddon. But during that first 42 months, you're going to see the first beast with the mouth of the lion, the iron and clay feet, the ten toes, the false prophet, the third temple, and the mark of the beast. Now, I want to just shift gears for one second and remind you that it's not just what's going on in Israel, but what's going on in the world economy now. you got to hear me. Guys, there's stuff going on in the world that's not got to do anything with Israel. I'm talking about the global money system. This is from the Bank of International Settlements. It says the Bank for International Settlements Innovation Hub is working on a central bank digital coin. Guys, we're talking about a global money system. We're talking about a coin that will rule the world, a currency run by the globalists in Switzerland. This article from Central Banking Magazine says, decentralized finance has outpaced regulation. That's from the European Central Bank paper. They're worried about these new decentralized cryptocurrencies because they don't want to lose control of the money. That tells you then that the central bankers 
are in hyper warp speed. They're trying to beat out cryptocurrency so they will have their own central bank digital coins that will control people all over the world and it's headed with lightning speed to us. This is an article from the Bank for International Settlements website. They say the Basel Committee is consulting on the disclosure of banks' cryptocurrency exposures. The Central bankers are worried about cryptocurrencies taking over and the central bankers losing control. And so they're acting right now with great speed to stop these free cryptocurrencies from taking place because they want a controllable currency. Look at this search result. We've seen JP Morgan's United Kingdom Bank, Chase Bank, is now banning cryptocurrencies transactions. What does that mean? The central bankers are trying to close down people's access to cryptocurrencies because they know that they're going to lose control of the population if the cryptocurrencies take over. Meanwhile, the European Central Bank is proceeding to its next phase of its digital currency project, a digital euro. They're trying to beat the cryptocurrencies to the draw. I'm trying to tell you, you're going to see a digital dollar. You're going to see a digital euro. All of these are on a timeline. We've already seen the Pope has launched his seven-year Laudato C action plan. I think that is very likely the confirmation of the covenant. And we're going to see this abomination of desolation in the middle of the week. The man of sin is going to stand in the temple and commit the abomination of desolation. That's going to start the great tribulation. All these verses, I won't go through these, but these point to an Assyrian man of sin that's going to come down and he's going to take over the temple. He's going to take over Jerusalem. John said in the book of Revelation, the angel told him to measure the, the temple because only the temple was given to the Jews because Jerusalem is going to be given to the Gentiles, which we understand to be Muslims at that time. And that Assyrian is going to rule over Israel for 42 months. He's coming from that region of Turkey. There you see a map of the ancient Assyrian Empire. Embraces Ankara, Turkey, which is the capital of Turkey. The king of the north, he's also called in the 11th chapter of Daniel. He's also identified in Ezekiel 38 as Gomer and Tagarman. He's coming to Armageddon. The king of the north from Daniel 11, I won't go through all of this. He's a dictator. The Jewish News Service said, Iran says if the Zionist regime crimes continue, resistance forces cannot be stopped. Who are these resistance forces? The Muslims the Turks, the Iranians, and ultimately they're going to be guarded by the Russians. Guys, it's about to happen. I want to look at these talking points before I quit. Number one, Israel and Hamas war is fueling global jihad. That's going to lead us to the Sixth Trumpet War and the Battle of Armageddon. Iran, Hamas, and Hezbollah are unstoppable. They're not going to be stopped. Israel can bomb the smithereens out of Hamas, but they'll just regroup and reform. Turkey, Iran, and Russia are going to demand a two-state solution. The world is right now turning against Israel more and more. The two-state solution, I believe, is going to come to us according to the book of Daniel, chapter 7 and 8. This little horn is going to divide the land for gain. That tells me that it's going to be done not by peace treaty, but by force. This man of sin is going to divide the land. It's not going to come by document. It's going to come by war. Russia and Turkey and Iran are going to attack Israel. That's what Ezekiel 38 says. This Vatican Chrislam is going to be anti-Semitic. You can believe the Pope and the Muslim leader of the world is not going to protect Israel. The Pope and the Muslim Assyrian man of sin are going to hate Israel and going to see to it that Israel is destroyed. That's going to bring about 42 months of great tribulation on Israel and all the world. We're going to see the Sixth Trumpet War and the Battle of Armageddon evolve from all of that. I've talked about the little horn. I'm not going to spend any time with this, but the Bible says there's going to be 10 horns rise up in Europe. The little horn is going to rise up. The 11th horn He's going to take away three of these horns from Europe. I suspect that we're going to see an Islamic revolution in Europe. I think it's a good chance we already see Islamic takeover. Uh, you can smell it already in Britain. You can see it in Germany and France. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see uh, Britain 
Germany and France fall to Islam. If not, it'll be some of the other nations. But we're going to see that little horn become the mouth. At first, we see the mouth of the lion is being manifest in the European global government. But we're going to see that little horn man of sin become the mouth in the last days. He's going to cause a lot of trouble. The Bible said he's going to be in power for 42 months. He's going to commit the abomination of desolation. And he, the court which was at the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it's given to the Gentiles, the holy city, shall they they tread underfoot 42 months. Do you hear what that prophecy says? Jerusalem is going to be trod down for 42 months. The Jews will not control Jerusalem for three and a half years. It's going to be desolate. I'm reading from Daniel 8 and 11. The Bible says this little horn is going to magnify himself to the prince of the host, which is Michael the archangel. And by this man of sin, the daily sacrifice was taken away and the place of his sanctuary cast down. This Bible says that the third temple is going to be taken down. It's going to be destroyed during the great tribulation. Daniel 8, 13, he said, I heard a saint speaking and said, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? That prophecy tells us that the sanctuary is going to be trodden down. It's going to be destroyed, and Jerusalem is going to be under the control of the Muslims. There's going to be two temples there. That's, you see the Jewish temple and the Dome of the Rock, which is the Islamic uh, holy site. And that's going to bring this war that the Bible says is going to make it desolate until the consummation and that determined shall be poured out on the desolate. The prophecies of Daniel 9 said that Jerusalem is going to be desolate and consumed. In Matthew 24, Jesus said, When you see that abomination of desolation, then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world of this time, except those days should be shortened. No flesh! No flesh, that's how horrible it's going to be, shall be saved. No flesh will be saved. Horrible, horrible times. God warns that Jerusalem is going to be desolate for 42 months. In Luke 21, 20, he said, when you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, now think about who these armies are. It's Turkey. It's Iran, it's Russia, it's Ethiopia, Libya. The king of the east is probably China. The ten horns of Europe are coming to make war with the Lamb. So you're going to see ten nations of Europe, Russia, Turkey, Iran, Ethiopia, Libya, and China all making war against Israel in the end of the days. And this verse from Zechariah 13, 8 and 9, it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts thereof shall be cut off and die. That means two-thirds of the Jews are going to die during that great tribulation. The third part shall be left therein, but I'll bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. Guys, it's bad news for Israel. During that great tribulation, we're going to see that sixth trumpet war take place. That involves the four horsemen. The prophecy said he saw the sixth angel which had the trumpet loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. That's the white horse, red horse, black horse, and green horse. And the four angels were loosed which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month to slay the third part of men. Guys, this is great tribulation like the world's never seen. And then finally the battle of Armageddon. Here you see the Armageddon coalition. Those are the nations I just mentioned. God said, I'm going to bring a sword on the land and say, sword, go through the land so that I cut off man and beast. Although these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, as I live, saith the Lord, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. They only shall be delivered themselves. So when God brings a sword on the land and says, sword, go through the land so that I cut off man and beast from it, nothing's going to stop it. Be afraid of the sword. For wrath brings the punishment. What's, what's the purpose of this? God is bringing Israel to its knees. He's finishing their transgression and making an end of their sins. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. They rejected Jesus Christ, and they're being called one more time to, re to believe on Jesus Christ. Then the Roman Catholic Church is going to be dealt with. Not, not only are these apostate, uh, unconverted Jews going to be dealt with severely. God's going to deal with this false religion in Rome. Revelation 17, 6 said, The ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, those are the ten horns of Europe. Catholic, I may add, they shall hate the whore and make her desolate and naked. 
shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. This tells me that the ten horns of Europe are going to turn on the Catholic Church and destroy Rome. For God has put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom to the beast until the word of God be fulfilled. So God's sending the sword against Rome. God warns that he's going to judge Rome. Come hither, he said, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sits on many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. John said in Revelation 18, the men, when they saw the burning of Rome, they cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, what city is like unto this great city? For in one hour she is made desolate. And then God also warns he's going to destroy the Assyria. That's Gomer and Tagarma. That's Turkey and Syria. He's saying, I will break the Assyrian in my land and upon my mountains tread him underfoot. That's Jesus Christ going to destroy this Assyrian man of sin when he comes. And he said his yoke is going to depart from off the Jews and his burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that's purposed on the whole earth. And this is the hand that is stretched out upon the nations. And then you read from Micah 5. God said, this man, speaking of Jesus, the baby born in Bethlehem, shall be the peace when the Assyrians shall come into our land and when he shall tread in our palaces. I might add, this verse was not fulfilled in the days of Jesus 2,000 years ago. It is an end time prophecy. Jesus is going to be the peace when the Assyrian, when the man of sin comes into our land and when he treads in our palaces, they shall waste the land of Assyria with a sword and the land of Nimrod and the entrances thereof. Thus shall he deliver us from the Assyrian when he comes into our land and when he treads in our palaces. Jesus is coming back because of the man of sin. Not only that, but God says he's going to judge all false Christianity. He's going to deal with false prophets and false teachers. Swift destruction and their damnation slumbers not. God didn't spare the angels that sinned. He didn't spare the old world in Noah's day. He didn't spare Sodom and Gomorrah. And he's not going to spare false Christianity. False apostles, deceitful workers, transforming them, themselves into apostles of Christ. But no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Paul said in his epistle to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be made known to all men. God's going to judge all sin and wickedness. He's going to destroy the Assyrian, who is the little horn, who is the king of the north, who is the man of sin, who is the beast. And he's going to destroy the false prophet when he comes. Jesus is going to destroy the leader of the Muslim world and the leader of the Catholic world. They're both going to be cast alive into a lake of fire burning with fire and brimstone. He's going to judge the beast and the false prophet and all their forces. That wicked shall be revealed who the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. John said, I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse. That's Jesus. He said, the beast was taken and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. They both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat on the horse, which sword proceeds out of his mouth. That's Jesus at the second coming, battle of Armageddon. God's going to judge the world for his sins. He's going to judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. That's Jesus Christ coming. Vengeance belongeth to me. I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. He's coming with his fan in his hand. He's going to thoroughly purge his floor. He's going to gather his wheat into his garner. That's his good saints. And he's going to burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. The Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and who obey not the gospel of Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. That verse says that Jesus is going to destroy with flaming fire all those who obey not the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's a horrifying thing. Jesus said you need to learn the parable of the fig tree. When you see all these prophecies being fulfilled, think about the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and puts forth new leaves, you know summer is nigh. So likewise you, when you shall see all these prophecies taking place, know that it's near even at the door. This 
generation will not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. That happened when the nation of Israel was reborn in 1948. David said in the Psalms, the days of our years are three score and ten years. If by reason of strength they be four score, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it's soon cut off and we fly away. I'm trying to tell you something. We are in the 75th year of an 80-year generation. It's about time for all these prophecies to be fulfilled. We've already seen the Pope, it appears, has launched a Laudato C seven year action plan he signed on with the hundred and ninety six nations of the United Nations to support the globalist agenda. We've seen the mouth of the lion, the mouth of King Charles of Britain stand up for the United Nations. We've seen the feet of the bear involved. We see the temple about to be built. We know the man of sin is going to come in, and we know it's going to be trod under foot of the Gentiles. We know that the Pope is going to launch the mark of the beast that's going to cause all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to take a mark. And if you don't take the mark, you won't be able to buy or sell. The mark of the beast is about to be launched. We know it's going to be a digital currency. We know it's going to require a digital global identification system. It's going to be for 42 months. Two preachers are going to rise up in Israel, going to preach the gospel for 42 months, try to convert who all can be converted in Israel. We know the 10 horns are going to rise up. Three are going to be taken over by Islam apparently. The great tribulation is going to take place for 42 months. The sword of Satan, the tribulation is Satan's wrath against all mankind. Israel's going to be punished. False Christianity is going to be punished. Godless sinners are going to be punished. Evil kings and nations are going to be punished. And the saints are going to be oppressed and afflicted by the world government during that time. But when Jesus comes, he's going to solve it all. At the end of the tribulation, we're going to see that, that sixth trumpet War is going to lead to the battle of Armageddon. We're going to see the seven vials of God's wrath just before Armageddon. The pox, that are the sores are going to be given to those who take the mark of the beast. The seas and rivers are going to turn to blood. There's going to be a sun scorching evil men. There's going to be darkness on the seat of the Antichrist. There's going to be uh, Euphrates is going to dry up to prepare the way of the kings of the east. And then Armageddon is going to be begin. And Mystery Babylon, the city of Rome, is going to be destroyed. And finally, the seventh trumpet. The second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The dead in Christ are going to rise. Living saints are going to be called to meet him in the air. All the saints are going to be with Jesus in the clouds to the battle of Armageddon. Jesus is going to destroy all of his enemies Armageddon. The beast and the false prophet are going to be destroyed. And the kingdom of Christ is going to begin for 1,000 years. Israel will be fully restored. The saints are going to rule as kings and priests in the millennial kingdom of Christ. Jesus is coming. He said, you repent or I'm going to come to you quickly and fight against you with the sword of my mouth. The Bible said, out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. With it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. This is the real sword of iron, not the sword of Israel's army, but the sword of Jesus Christ. He's going to tread out the winepress of the fierceness of his wrath of Almighty God, Revelation 19, 15. We know the word of God is that sword, and that's what's going to straighten the world out. That's why I tell you, if you don't want to be destroyed, Jesus said all those that don't obey the gospel are going to be destroyed. So I tell you today, obey the gospel. The gospel is the good news that saves your eternal soul. Jesus told it to Nicodemus, Marvel not, I say unto you, you must be born again. If a man's not born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Then he added in verse 5, I say unto you, except you be born of water and of spirit, you shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of God. Say that, water and spirit. You need a water birth in the waters of baptism in Jesus' name, and you need a spirit birth like they had in the book of Acts chapter 2. Born of the Holy Ghost, filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. That's what Peter said on the day of Pentecost. He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I'm trying to say to you saints and sinners, get ready. These are the last days you'll never see. There's never been a day like this. There's never going to be a day like this again. When all this is over, we're going to have peace on earth, goodwill toward men under the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Jesus is going to build the fourth temple 
According to the book of Zechariah, he's going to, the Messiah is going to build his own temple there in Jerusalem. He's going to rule the world with a rod of iron. And the Jews are going to inhabit the Holy Land. The Bible said in the 35th chapter of Ezekiel that uh, Israel is going to be like the Garden of Eden. And the saints, the Christian saints, are going to rule the whole world, all the nations and cities, as kings and priests unto God for a thousand years. Don't you want to be a part of that kingdom of God? Don't let your atheism and your, your skepticism, your agnosticism talk you out of this, guys. The testimony of Jesus, the evidence of Jesus, the witness of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. All these prophecies are absolutely true. Not one prophecy of this book is ever going to fail. Not one jot or tittle of the word of God is ever going to fail because they're all true. God knew the end from the beginning and he speaks those things into existence and judgment is coming on this earth so that righteousness can rule. God's going to destroy that wicked one. It all goes back to the Garden of Eden when the serpent led Adam and Eve into sin. God said he's going to raise up a seed of the woman that was going to destroy that evil seducer, Lucifer. We're going to see that happen in our day. When Jesus comes back, the Bible said Satan's going to be bound in chains of darkness for a thousand years. And at the end of that thousand years, Jesus... It's going to send his angels. They're going to take Lucifer and throw him in the lake of fire for eternity. And then heaven and earth is going to pass away. Every man, saint, and sinner is going to go to the judgment seat of Jesus Christ. Every, uh, the Bible said the wicked shall be turned into hell and every nation that forgets God and the, the saints of God that are born again whose names are in the Lamb's book of life are going to receive an entrance into the gates of that eternal city, that four square city of Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem. John said, I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the old heaven and the old earth are passed away. Guys, you can't afford not to believe this gospel. You, you can't afford to take any chances. This Bible is forever true. I don't care what atheism you see in this world you better believe the gospel of jesus christ repent and be saved i say to you today in jesus name i'm so thankful that you've been with me today i hope that you will stay with me and subscribe to my youtube channel i do this i try to do a major video every week if possible and i'm trying to teach everybody everywhere what the bible prophecies say about the last days and the reason i do that is because i want you to be saved this is a this is a divine calling i consider myself to have been called of god to do the work that i'm doing i do it with a great conscientiousness i do it with a great desire to be correct in everything that i say that doesn't mean that i everything i say is perfect but i'm doing my best to tell you the truth about god and i want you to help me with this would you do that would you help me by spreading these videos and spreading the posts that, th that I do on social networks? Subscribe to my YouTube channel, to my Rumble channel, to my BitChute channel, so you'll see all my videos. Uh, subscribe to my social networks, Facebook, Twitter, MeWe, Gab, CloudHub, and Truth Social, and anywhere you find me, just follow me there. Also, please, I've written nine books. Two of my books are called The Daily Bible Companion. It's 1,428 pages of Bible lessons from Genesis to Revelation. I cover lessons from every single chapter of the Bible. I've tried to teach the Bible to everybody who will follow me. Go to my website at kenradio.com. Look up thousands of pages of Bible teachings there that's absolutely free. Sign up for my daily Bible studies there by email. One email every day gives you four mini Bible lessons every single day. Go to Amazon and look up my books. Nine books there. The Daily Bible Companions. My book, The Daniel Prophecies, is 726 pages. It covers all the major prophecies of the Bible. Uh, my book called Treasures of Darkness, How to See the Glory of God in Your Darkest Trials. A book on prayer called Praying on Purpose, Praying for Results, How Men Prevail with God. A book called Greatest Doctrines of the Bible, The Oneness of God and the New Birth. Several books there. Look them up. You can buy them on Amazon or you can order the entire set. If you have a United States address, I'll send you the entire set of nine books for only $125. Please check the link below. Order those books today. You'll enjoy these books. They will bless you and help you and teach you the ways of the Lord. Please also, if you can help Help me with this ministry. I need your help more than ever before. I don't want to fail in this endeavor. I want you to support me and strengthen me in this thing. I need your help. Help me by clicking on the donation link below. You can send in a cash or a check or whatever you want by snail mail. There's a street address you can send it to, or you can use PayPal or Venmo or Cash App. There's addresses you can do for that. Help me with this ministry. And again, spread all this stuff 
to your friends and like and share and make comments and help me to get this message to more and more people. And may God bless you. Thank you for joining me tonight. I'll see you again next time. Thank you for watching. Please like and share and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, MeWe, Gab, CloudHub, BitChute, Rumble, YouTube, Telegram, Truth Social, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Visit my website at kenradjo.com for thousands of pages of Bible articles on every subject. Subscribe to receive my daily Bible studies by email. Go to Amazon, search for books by Ken Raggio. You'll see my daily Bible companion, 5,000 lessons almost from every chapter of the Bible, two volumes said Old and New Testaments. Get the Daniel Prophecy. God's plan for the last days, 726 pages with footnotes, 175 photos, one of the most powerful prophecy teachings anywhere. Get the greatest doctrines of the Bible. Get praying on purpose, praying for results, how men prevail with God. Get long winding road, my very personal story, and treasures of darkness, how to see the glory of God in your darkest trials. Click the link below if you want all nine books for only $125 here in the United States only. And please donate through the link below and then share these videos with your friends. And I'll see you next time. Good night.